All right, friends, it's Tina back with another video, and it's on a, a review by uh, Goatis. Reviewing Dr. Berg is wrong. And uh, I'm going to review this video because I think it's a very good video. It's important. Uh, so Goatis says, Dr. Eric Berg, or Severage, Severage Goatis, this guy uh, on the channel who's uh, talking about him, Go at us. He says, Dr. Berg is wrong. Everything that's uh, counterintuitive is unhealthy. That is true. I believe in everything that he says, and you're going to find out why in this video. Hi, everyone. As requested, I'm going to review a video by Dr. Eric Berg. The video is called Top Counterintuitive Health Tips That Are Deadly Effective. Before we start the video, I want to say that I like Dr. Eric Berg. He has a lot of helpful videos. I don't agree with all of them, that's all right. His overall message is correct. He's simply misinformed about some topics. I'm pretty sure that I will disagree with this one and that's because there's nothing counterintuitive that can be in any way beneficial for you. And that's because our intuition is only there to benefit us. If we don't listen to our intuition, then it can actually be deadly for us a lot of times. The more I look at health, the more that you cannot create health without stress. And That's completely wrong. Stress is always bad for you. Stress only reduces your lifespan. Stress can never in any way be beneficial for you. Of course, people usually say this because they... I, I agree. No stress could be beneficial for you. <laughs> stress can only end up killing you and shortening your lifespan and a bunch of other things what doesn't kill you doesn't make you stronger what doesn't kill you makes you weaker over time I believe that growing as in uh, going to the gym and actually growing your muscles is beneficial for you even though it actually only destroys your health and reduces your lifespan they believe that stressing your body and uh, adapting yourself to stress is healthy even though there's nothing actually healthy about it nothing in any way at all yeah i wouldn't say i here's the, the whole building of the muscle thing that's that's uh, that's been always in the back of my mind for a long time too people go to the gym they're frequently going to the gym thinking they're building muscle but they're really never building anything and they always look the same and they they go there that's why i made up this thing about gym slaves uh lifting slaves fitness slaves diet slaves all these kind of things people are slave to the thing is, they're all adapted to all these things that they're doing. There isn't any benefits there. Do you understand me? Yeah, there's a thing called adaptation, definitely. That could short your lifespan or it could regenerate you. It's, it, it depends on how you use it. You could use it for regenerative purposes or you could use it to diminish you. Like I said, what doesn't kill you doesn't make you stronger. It makes you weaker over time. Some bit of destruction. You've heard the concept, no pain, no... Yes, uh, destruction, exactly. You only destroy yourself through stress. No pain, no gain. That's exactly what I was talking about. Yes, I agree with him. That's why I don't lift. I don't go to gyms often. I take decades off, years, months, whatever. I don't go there very often. If I ever go there, it's for regenerative purposes or conditioning like I'm doing now. I'm just conditioning myself. But I'm really aware about the stress. And I try to do my exercises even in a very relaxed state. Most of the time I'm doing cable machines. I'm laying down on the floor doing my back. I'm doing my entire back on the floor. And sometimes I use the cable machine. I lean over and I do presses in the opposite direction. It's because really a lot of the reason is because I'm trying to remove the stress of the workout and i'm trying to build muscle or i'm trying to damage muscle in a very particular way without adding all the stress to it see what i mean because i know it's based on numerous stretches the, the more stretches you could cause on a myofibular the more chances it has to cause these micro tears and then it'll come back rebuild bigger and stronger and i tell you you could you could call it that but that is one way and plus the the conditioning part i need to condition because i'm an older person i've got a little bit too much fat i don't like it too much body fat on me I'm trying to i'm trying to reorganize my body a bit that's about it yeah the things that i did in the past but you can absolutely make gains by adapting your body to any kind of exercise yes your body can adapt to yes a lot of stress you can become more adapted to cold showers saunas 
anything, but every time you do this, you become unhealthier and reduce your lifespan. That's what people need to understand. Gain or what doesn't and, kill. And does that make you stronger? No, it makes you weaker. What doesn't kill you will make you stronger. Dr. Berg now, his, his philosophy. You will make you I have a great video about this topic, actually. It's called hormesis. What doesn't kill you makes you weak and sick, and that's because every time you in any way get injured, experience any kind of stress, your cells, of course, die. They try to, of course, also adapt to the stress, but uh, that's why your lifespan is reduced, and it always makes you weaker and sicker. Always, no exceptions. There's sexual. I, I agree with him. It does. It does make you weaker and sicker because I've had friends like that, exposed to stress, worked hard, they lifted, did sports, a whole bunch of stuff, and then they died young. They got weaker. They got a weak heart. They got they got weaker. Their body got weaker, and the heart got weaker, and then they died. They died. It didn't make them stronger. It made them weaker. I'm well aware of all these things. And I think you too should be aware of these things. I think people out there on my channel, I'm just, look guys, I'm just trying to inform you. I think you need to be aware of these things. That's all. You can take it with a grain of salt. Believe whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. But I'm informing people that actually want to know the truth. Okay, man? This is not for the people, the haters that don't want to know the truth. Okay? They want to hide behind a curtain or whatever a great quote which i posted in my community tab a few months ago every stress leaves an inedible scar and the organism pays for its survival after a stressful situation by becoming a little older people under yes i'm aware of that i've read that in science every stress leaves an inedible scar and the organism pays for its survival after a stress situation by becoming a little bit what older yeah to be nature created, to me, nature created man and nature is superior. Nature is superior because it created man. What makes me so certain that the natural human lifespan is far in excess of the actual one is this. Among all the autopsies, and I have performed over 1,000, I've never seen a person who died of old age. In fact, I do not think that anyone has ever died of old age yet. We invitably die because one vital part has worn out to too early in proportion to the rest of the body unlock your natural drives by doing what you enjoy doing what you enjoy that's why people ask me lift a heavy weight do this and that i'm i told them i do what i enjoy on my channel i enjoy right now conditioning myself and i enjoy the exercises that i do because they're stress-free but if you like to stress yourself out lift a heavy weight destroy yourself destroy your health your lifespan and everything and rant and rave uh, how great you people are and everything then go ahead rant and rave how great you are but it's not going to last very long it's going to be short-lived my friend the russian guy was a wrestler this that he did all these stressful things, heavy stuff, this, that. He died at 60. He didn't make it to 60. He died. He started complaining about getting weak, and then he had a weak heart, and then he disappeared, okay? So did it make him stronger, all this stress and this lifting and weightlifting and uh, his, his physical jobs and everything that he did? Did it make him stronger? No. Over time, it made him weaker, and then he died, that's what happens. So like this guy said, people didn't die of old age. In fact, what did they die of? See what I mean? They died because of a vital part that was worn out too early. It was worn out too early. You can wear out your heart, your organs, your body parts, your cells. You can wear them out too early. I'm more into regeneration than I am wearing out my body and getting weaker. No thanks. Understood this back in the day. Uh, even the doctors did. Nowadays, you have a uh, nonsense science, a uh, religious belief such as uh, hormesis, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, and all of these charlatans are promoting it. Yeah, I, I fucking I began to hate Dr. Rhonda Patrick. I hate her. I hate her channel. I hate her information and all these other asshole people that are out there. These charlatans, like he said, they're all charlatans. They want to convince you and all these crazy things. It's only to build up their subscribes and stuff to keep them busy by pumping out all this crazy stuff. And then people believe what they're saying, what they're doing.
stronger? I mean, what's up with that? So today I'm going to do a little bit of a deep dive into this term hormesis. Now, what is this term hormesis? What does that mean? It's a tr- Hormesis is literally just your body's adaption to stress. It's never beneficial. It's always unhealthy for you. I'm going to describe two things that might oppose each other in outcome. And I'm going to give a lot of examples, but, you know, I think we all know that um, when we exercise, we're creating destruction in our cells. And then the outcome of that is something that's... You are creating destruction in your cells. Here's another thing. It isn't based on regeneration. If you're adapted, moving up and down, creating these destructions to the cells. Stronger, it's healthier, it's more fit. No, that's exactly your problem, Dr. Berg. You... It's actually the opposite, and I will agree with Goatis, it's the opposite. Equate strength with health, even though they have nothing to do with each other. Yes, you... strength and health have nothing to do with each other. You see this guy is like lifting a heavy weight. Look, he's so strong because he can lift so heavy. But that has no correlation with health. And if anything, over time, it's unhealthy to lift heavy shit. You can become more adapted to lifting man-made metal in a man-made building for no reason at all. That's what people do at the gym. You can bench press more and more weight for no reason. All that you do is reduce your lifespan by doing that. That's you- right. The more you bench press, the heavier you press weights, the more you shorten your lifespan. That's what I discovered. That's why I don't go to gyms. When I built when I built my body, I just I knew that instinctually. I just instinctually I always knew that. That's why I was in a hurry to build my body really fast. So I figured, okay, I found what builds my body fast, food, this damaging effect, ball, and I built it and then I never came back to the gym ever again. Ever. Ever for the next two decades, I just basically never came back. And then I just started coming back now and then. And even during COVID, I took four years off. And I just happened to be coming back to the gym now. People always ask me, how do you look like a bodybuilder if you don't lift? How do you look like that? How do you have these big arms if you don't lift weights? Because it isn't based on going to a gym and lifting weights. Get it? It's based on building it once and never coming back. That's the whole point. But that's the physical side. Now, you want to force production, getting good at lifting uh, heavy, heavy objects. That's based on force production. It comes and goes. You can't feel, you can't feel or touch or taste or see a force production. You understand me? So it's fake. It's just there because it's to make you good at doing specific things, like a factory worker. You can become more fit. That's never in any way going to make you healthier. You will reduce your lifespan, which means that you will die. So- yes, fit doesn't make you healthier. Fit just makes you better doing, uh, getting better at doing those things. Whatever it is you're doing doesn't make you healthier. Death is the unhealthiest state that a human body or any animal's body can be in. The longer you live, the healthier you are. Therefore, anything that you do that reduces your lifespan makes you unhealthier because you die. <laughs> That's right. I don't know how to make it any clearer. Death is, of course, unhealthy. So hormesis is really about... Death is unhealthy. That's why people can't figure out how could you be pushing 60 and looking and looking like a young guy, built and young, and not like Blaha, a melted candle, because Blaha is going to die soon. He's a melted candle. A controlled dose of stress. And deep inside... Yes, because too much stress kills you. You can't work out for 10 hours straight in a row or every day for many, many hours. But you can go to... And no, steroids don't make you look young, okay? They don't reverse aging. <laughs> the gym, an hour a day, you will be super stressed. You will reduce your lifespan by decades. You will sleep 12 hours a day. But you can do it to adapt yourself to the gym, that's what hormesis is. It's completely pointless and unhealthy, but you can do it. Ourselves, we have this very interesting uh, adaptation mechanism. And the system that actually is controlling this is part endocrine system. Last year, we shared with you this story. Is controlling this is part endocrine system and part autonomic nervous system. So both of these work together to help your body adapt to becoming stronger. And the key word is adaptation. And you probably heard of the concept of um, survival of the fittest it should be called it makes you it adapts you to to being good at doing these things huh. 
Man. Survival of those who can adapt the best. So with hormesis, you can adapt from various stresses, radiation, exercise. Again, that doesn't make you live longer or healthier. <laughs> that just makes you adapt to whatever it is that you're doing there. This is stupid. High stress, cold stress. I don't know about radiation, but uh, cold stress also. Another example, a lot of people do cold showers and ice baths <coughs> today. You can absolutely adapt your body to the cold and uh, you can absolutely and for sure will reduce your lifespan by doing that. Heat stress like sauna, things like that. Also reducing your oxygen and increasing your CO. Yes, there's even sauna competitions in Finland and all of those countries where it's cold, which is why people go into saunas. They crave the heat, the warmth so much it's understandable it's very depressing to live in such cold countries a lot of those people are alcoholics they do these competitions and a lot of them get heart attacks in the saunas because it's way too much stress for the body two can create a hormetic effect and even various plant chemicals a lot of different insecticides pesticides and even fungicides of course they're in very very yes and you can also adapt your body to snake poison even you can take small doses and eventually you will be not necessarily immune to snake poison but uh, you may be more likely to survive a bite from a snake but by poisoning yourself all of the time you destroy yourself and reduce your lifespan every time you experience any kind of stress you scar your body you kill your cells and you reduce your lifespan every single time. With the adaptation of snake poison, you could absolutely adapt to it in case you ever get bit by a snake. It's most likely never gonna happen except if your job revolves around it. But would it be worth it to reduce your lifespan by probably decades just to adapt to snake poison? It's just stupid. They're low doses because they're meant to kill these small little insects. But when we consume them, we're creating a hormetic effect. So let's just take, for example, sulforaphane, like in broccoli sprouts or radish sprouts. What it does is it triggers certain proteins, certain chemical pathways. One protein that it triggers is called a heat shock protein that activates certain things that allow us to strengthen our detoxification enzymes. So here we are exposed to a small dose of a poison that strengthens our own ability. At least he admits that sulforaphane is a poison. That's great to get rid of poisons you know no not at all in any way the only thing that happens when you consume anything with sulforaphane is that your body tries to detox from the sulforaphane that's it it doesn't actually help you and actually according to the studies it actually makes it even harder for you to detox in the future because you use up your white blood cells for example to detox from the sulforaphane that means that there's less left to detox from anything else. It's horrible. The less you detox, the more likely you will be to detox when you actually need to detox. <laughs> the more you put your body under stress, the worse it's gonna be, of course. The liver, we have these enzyme systems called phase one, phase two detoxification, where we can take a poison and turn it into a harmless particle. Well, guess what triggers that system? The sulforaphane, this poison. You're causing all these different enzymes and proteins to then rebuild and repair. And so the rebuilding and repair mechanism won't occur until you trigger it. So in other words, exercise induces microinflammation that then allows our bodies to get rid of inflammation. And then we get into- It's funny that he calls it microinflammation. It's as if he doesn't want to say the word inflammation. You can say it as you always say it. Yes, exercise causes inflammation. Of course, it's all right to say it out loud. This wild concept of starving our bodies, right? We call that fasting. And all of a sudden... Wow, he also calls fasting starving. Yes, it's literally starvation. All of these amazing things occur. Our brain cells start growing more, our mitochondria... Your brain cells start growing more when you're starving. Literally, when you're starving. He even admits starvation. Starvation is terrible for you. What the fuck, bro? Why would the hell would you want to starve yourself? How could that be beneficial in any way? while you're starving show me the proof of that <laughs> i agree with him how are you going to build these brain cells starving that's just crazy it's increasing in number our immune system gets regenerated from new stem cell new stem cells regenerated immune system proof i need proof what do you mean deep in our gene yeah, i don't know that isn't based on muscular regeneration but whatever from years of adaptation, the different mechanisms that were strengthened and created to counter starvation so we could survive. Because when you think about it, starvation can kill you if you go on too long. 
But short term, it's amazing. Same thing with exercise, right? How is it amazing? It's counterintuitive. Your intuition tells you not to starve because it's bad for you, because it kills your cells. It reduces your lifespan. And that's because in nature, if you don't have food, then you're a loser. You're a bad hunter. You failed at life. And nature punishes you by killing you. If you don't eat for longer, then you actually die, as he said. That's the ultimate punishment. That is absolutely true. I agree with him, man. Nature can punish you. It can be very cruel, bro. You can overtrain to the point where you're completely dead, right? But just a little bit of exercise is really good. Same thing with... What is so good about exercise? Name one health benefit of exercising. Just... A zero. There isn't any. People are exercising for cosmetic purposes in gyms, or they want to look good lifting a heavy weight. Two things they want to do. They want to lift heavy weight for no reason to look cool, or they're doing it for a cosmetic, a cosmetic look. But... It can have a benefit when it comes to regeneration, but that can't be, that can only be very periodic. That people don't even understand what that means periodically to get this regenerative effect out of lifting. One, cold therapy, right? I mean, think about it. It's only so much time you're going to be able to spend in this, uh, you know, 35 degree temperature before you're going to have problems. Each person has their own individual tolerance for certain stress. They Actually, this reminds me of a video that I saw. This is the video. It's about him taking cold showers every day. It's in German. I will translate it for you. We will quickly go through it. The results are interesting. Ich war die ganze Zeit fit, hatte halt so ein bisschen äh, Atemwegserkrankung, aber das war eigentlich auch alles. Ja, also das denkt. He says that he was fit, but had some problems with his respiratory system. Sich auch mit dem, was wir hier sehen, wenn wir mal in die Blutergebnisse nehmen, dann. He says that he can see that in his blood results. Da liegen, sehen wir, dass das Immunsystem aktiviert. And this is the interesting part. He's saying that the immune system was activated, and that's exactly what happens with cold showers and especially ice baths. Your body feels attacked. You can actually get an infection from the cold. That's also what happens in winter. That's why people get the cold in cold weather. That's why it always comes in winter. For the most part, of course, you can also get a cold in summer, technically. But uh, people usually get sick when the weather gets colder, when there's no sunlight. And that's because um, they don't wear a scarf or a hat. When they go outside, a lot of guys like to act tough. And then they are sick for days or weeks because uh, they didn't wear warm enough clothes. That's what you got to do when you live in cold climates. And uh, if you're stupid enough to go into cold water like an idiot, on purpose, then uh, your immune system will be activated all of the time. You will produce, uh, well, we'll see what he will say. Aktiver ist jetzt nach vier Wochen. Echt? Das halt duschen, weil wir die Abwehrzellen, die sind jetzt mehr. Yes, exactly. The antibodies, the white blood cells, have been activated because he's in the cold all of the time and the body feels attacked. And uh, these guys don't even realize what they are looking at. They will actually come to the conclusion that it's somehow beneficial. I don't know how. Even doctors who are very ignorant nowadays about health should understand that if your immune system is activated by something that you do, then it's bad, that you need to stop it right away. But for some reason, I don't know if it's some kind of ignorance, they just ignore it and uh, just say, oh, your immune system was activated, which 100% proves that what you were doing was bad for you. But we will just, for some reason, for the video, Go along with the idea that it's somehow good for you. Exactly, when you have allergies, for example, that's when they increase. And uh, <laughs> it's just so crazy. It's just so crazy because everybody who has any idea about blood tests knows that this is a bad sign. <laughs> He says that it's better, but it's higher. Never have I heard that before, only in this video. Every other time you go to a doctor and when it's high, they will say you need to get it lower. <laughs> I'll agree with him on that one for sure, yes. 
Yeah, I'm missing that city. Oh my god, man. It's just so crazy. And oh my god, oh my god. It's not my, it's not my last first year. I'm not going to be pushing this <laughs> And he says if you continue for 30, 40 years, then you can imagine what, and they have nothing to say because really, what does he even mean? He doesn't even understand what he means himself. If you do cold showers for 30 years, well, you're not even going to get to 30 years. That's the whole problem. You're going to become deadly sick. Umgekehrt ist es übrigens auch so, dass das Testosteron, also das Männlichkeitshormon, yeah. auch höher ist. He says that his testosterone is higher now, obviously, not by a lot, but your testosterone changes from... I guess that, that's a defense mechanism, man. This is not for building muscle. Crazy shit. Today, which means that if he would have tested him a few hours later or before, it could have been the same or even lower. It doesn't mean anything whatsoever. Das, das hat, hatte ich ja auch vorher gelesen, dass das Testosteron erhöht werden sollte durch dieses Kaltduschen. He says that he read before he started this torture that your testosterone could increase because of cold showers. The thing is also, which he doesn't understand, the doctor probably also doesn't know this, that testosterone is an antioxidant. It can also actually increase in your blood because it's fighting inflammation or more specifically the damage that you have done. The inflammation itself, of course, is healing uh, the damage, but uh, it helps along with the inflammation, which is why it lowers the inflammation. Indirectly, it helps with the inflammation. Oder auch durch diese Kältekammer. Und das hat den Vorteil, wenn Sie mehr Testosteron haben, dass die Muskeln auch schneller wachsen. Mm -hmm. He says that your muscles will grow quicker if you have more testosterone. If you would be using it for the muscles, which he isn't in this case, he's using it to fight the cold. <laughs> it's so stupid. This video is so dumb. I just had to show it. We cannot create health just by being sedentary all the time and doing nothing. That's literally how humans in nature live. You can watch any kind of documentaries about so-called tribes, of course, they are also more modern today, but still they live way more naturally than we do. They sit around most of the day and uh, the men go and hunt the food sometimes. and. Uh, they do that sometimes by just setting up traps. They don't even do anything physical, so to speak. <laughs> it's just such a joke. There's some other interesting counterintuitive things about health too. And this is not a hormesis thing, but it's just very counterintuitive, right? Because we used to think that if we cut the amount of fat that we eat, then we will lose our fat. Well, we found that that didn't work because people- Yes, and he's right about that. He says a lot of stuff, which is right when it comes to diet. And also the thing about- uh, um, I'll agree with that. It does, some things are- some things he has, but it's a lot of misconstrued shit on his channel, Dr. Berg. Being sedentary, most people don't realize that being sedentary means that you don't do anything for six hours a day. That's it. That's the very definition of being sedentary. It's not about doing nothing or sitting around all day long. And this is exactly how humans live in nature. All of them, without an exception, are sedentary by definition. I'll stop the video here because all that he did was continue talking about medications and the diet. We already know what he thinks about those topics. If you've seen his videos, then you for sure know that he promotes eating um, quite a lot of meat, also vegetables. He's wrong about that, but right about the meat. He generally promotes eating a lot of animal foods, and um, that's, of course, great. He's wrong about um, some specific topics. Diet is, of course, what defines your health, which is why it's great that he promotes eating animal foods. And he also researched a lot of topics, but then again, um, <laughs> To be able to properly research, you need to be able to think for yourself. You can't do research and simply blindly believe, which I'm not saying that he does, but probably partly he does. What you're reading, you can't just read a study and believe that it's the absolute truth. And you can't read any research papers, any articles even, and just believe them. You need to read a lot of sources and really look deep into behind the biochemical mechanisms of what you're talking about. And when it comes to going against your intuition, then when we actually look at it, as we saw with the cold showers, and we can see that our immune system hates it, which means that our bodies hate it. Our bodies technically attack the cold. And that's because it really causes an infection in the body. And uh, when we look at all of the other topics also, then we will always see, such as exercise, that your body hates it. It attacks it, that's why it creates the inflammation, that's why uh, it creates the immune cells. It's always about attacking what's harming your body. And everything that is counterintuitive 
is bad for your body, it's always an attack on your body. It's something that you should never do. Thanks for watching. Daddy. That was a good video, man. <laughs> I believe everything he says. And that's true, actually, in that video. There isn't anything in there that wasn't true. I'll see you in the next one. Tell you to think about that. Like, subscribe, support the channel. Helps the algorithm, friends. I'll see you in the next one. Yes, man. <laughs> Dr. Berg. Um, some things, he's got some good things, but a good majority of it's just a lot of baloney, man. Malarkey there, his channel. See you in the next one. Ciao, friends.